Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. Today I want to talk about crunch. There's been a lot of people talk, saying a lot of things about crunch. People have been saying a lot of things about crunch for decades. Uh, I don't know how much I can add to this other than my own experience with crunch and both being on crunch that was imposed on me, being on crunches that I imposed, being on crunches that were caused by other people, being on crunches that I caused. So it gives me a <clears throat> pretty big perspective on crunch. And let me just define crunch, first of all. Crunch is the extra work, usually at the end of a game, but it could occur before making a demo or a conference. It's the crunch that happens when the game's development gets behind schedule. So you have to work hard, extra hours, weekends, to make up and get the game back on schedule. Now, to me, one of the most annoying things I hear, and I'm going to be very careful how I say this, I hear this a lot, quote, crunch is always the result of bad management, unquote. No. No. If people are saying this, I find that they're usually just repeating something they've heard somewhere else, or they have so little experience in the game industry that they do not know what they're talking about. They may get one game under their belt, they saw the crunch one on that, and they're like, crunch is bad and it's management's fault. No. Here, I'll rephrase it. Crunch is usually the result of bad management. There. I think everybody can agree to that. But saying it's always the cause pushes it too far, and I'll go into it. But yes, let me just say right now, the biggest cause of crunch is poor management, and it this can be management in a lot of different ways. It could be the game was overscoped by the designers, and the lead designer did not, you know, clamp down on this overscoping. It could be bad estimates done by developers that weren't caught by the leads. It could be failure in production to spot bad schedules at the start of a game. You know, like things have been misestimated or time was not allotted for certain things at all. Or while the game is under underway, production didn't spot areas that were falling behind early enough to do anything about it. And that all that leads to crunch. And I admit that happens a lot. I would say that a lot of crunch, anywhere from a lot to most, crunch is caused by those factors. But there are so many other reasons I've seen games crunch beyond bad management, which is why I bristle when people go, all crunch is caused by bad management. And I'm like, whoa, you have not scratched the surface of why crunch is happening. So I'm going to walk through um, some of the things I've seen and hopefully it'll give you a picture of why crunch happens so much in the game industry. First of all, developers take a variable amount of time to complete their assignments. I personally have taught university level computer science classes. And I say university level because these students were vetted in many cases better than a, a game industry employees vetted. I mean, these were people, who, these were students who they all had to you know, they probably did well in high school. They had to do well on an SAT uh, test, an achievement test. They had to get into the university with whatever the university's admission process was. And then they had to take all the prerequisites for the class you're teaching. Even then, I would find students with vastly different uh, programming backgrounds and expectations and recall of previous classes taken. So when you gave them assignments, you would find that different students would take wildly different amounts of time to get their code done. And the end result, whether it's the quality of the, clo the, the, quality of the, uh, the overall piece of code, like in its output, or the quality of the code itself, like clean code, how many bugs were in it and all that, those were wildly different and often not proportional to how much time the person spent. I saw people turn in assignments early and it was gorgeous. I saw other people turn in assignments late that were wonderful. And then I saw a bunch of bad stuff turned in early and a bunch of bad stuff turned in late. So I quickly learned at university, there doesn't seem to be much of a correlation between time and quality. And later when I, you know, 
started talking with artists at companies. And, you know, I started a company, Troika, with two artists. I remember talking to Leonard. He said that in his classes, it often took students a lot of different time to paint a portrait for an assignment. Um, sometimes the same student would take different amount of time on different portraits. So it's hard to estimate that. So I'm going to say, good luck. If you're a lead or a producer, good luck estimating tasks or getting developers who can accurately predict how long that work will take. It doesn't happen very frequently. Also, good luck getting a publisher to fund your reasonably scoped project. I see everybody complain, this project wasn't reasonably scoped. You know what? Every publisher I've ever worked for, from the ones I enjoyed working for to ones I did not enjoy working for, they all wanted a Ferrari, but they had the budget to buy a Toyota. And they have been the sweetest people about it. Like, well, don't you want to make a good game? Don't you want your game to score well? You know, your royalties are going to be based on how good this game is. So they talk you into putting in more and more features. Go back and look at some of my previous videos. I told you in Temple, I tried to pull out classes that would have been and did add a length of time to the project we did not have. And it was either, well, put paladins, druids, and bards in, or don't make this game at all. Maybe I should have walked away from it. I didn't. I've also been told by my bosses on contracts I didn't have any involvement in that this is the one I love. Quote, figure out how to do a dollar of content for a quarter, unquote. Okay, I'll try to. But then when the quality level is lower or the length of the game is shorter, they're like, wait a minute. Rah. And I'm like, that's what the budget was. Compare us to things of similar budget. Also, and I've talked about this in different videos, good luck telling a developer no on a feature idea they have without you becoming a bad guy. And by the way, this situation for a lead or director is a complete trap. And I'll tell you why. Let's say you say yes to their feature. If the game ends up overscoped, you're the one held accountable, not them. They'll even go, oh, I didn't realize, you know, it would lead to this problem in the game. You should have said no. You're the one with more experience. But if you say no, not only are you the bad guy, because you, you never say yes to my ideas, but you might produce a game that has an issue uh, because of that feature would have, that new feature would have solved the, a problem with the existing feature it replaced. Or maybe the game is now too short because the feature idea would, would have added more content. Either way, you're the bad guy. So once the game is underway and people have ideas for new features, it doesn't matter whether you say yes or no, you will end up being the bad guy. Unless you somehow have perfect oracular foresight, which I've never met anyone who did. Also, on when I'm talking about team members, good luck with developers who hate pointless meetings but have no trouble talking endlessly in them. Or come to your office and talk for hours trying to convince you that a feature should be put in. See my previous point about this is a trap. But yes, I've been caught in my office for hours by people trying to explain that something they want to put in the game should be added. And I'm sitting there thinking that I don't think it belongs in the game. But again, it's a trap. If I say yes and we've overscoped, I'll be held accountable. If I say no, they're going to stomp off and tell everybody else who will, who will hear them how awful I am at listening to them. So good luck with that. Good luck avoiding all the bugs in your game's design, much less bugs in the code and the art. Wait, you didn't know that design and art could have bugs in them? That adding a feature could cause an imbalance in the game that would then tie up your designers and programmers? Or that a piece of art could go in the game that's flawed and again, tie up artists and programmers? Well, that can happen, so good luck. Also, Good luck designing a fallback for every single design feature in your game that either doesn't get implemented in time, doesn't get implemented to quality, or doesn't get implemented bug-free enough to actually end up in the final game. You think you can just cut out a feature, but sometimes you can't because features are all interconnected. Cutting out a feature may wreck everything. If you've already designed your economy, for example, and then you decide, oh, crafting's not working and you cut it out, well, there went money sinks, there went rewards that, you know, for recipes and other uh, quests that give you crafting recipes, there go a whole section of the game that you plan for the player to engage in, and it's now just gone. So you just can't snip it out. So you should have had a fallback for it. 
good luck making a fallback for every single feature in your game. Because eventually you will need those fallbacks and you won't be able to predict when the game ships what fallbacks you're going to need. Oh, are you using a third-party engine or just third-party tools? Good luck getting them to fix bugs. It's sometimes like pulling teeth dealing with their support. Or they'll tell you, oh, we fixed that. It'll be in the next revision. When will the revision be? We don't know. Or... If a new version comes out, good luck deciding whether or not to use it. Sometimes that version has a bunch of new features that would be great in your game or fix bugs that would be great in your game or introduce bugs that you don't want in the game. I don't think I've ever seen a new version of a game engine or tool come out that is 100% good or bad. It usually adds a bunch of stuff we wanted, fixed a bunch of stuff we were encountering, and introduces a bunch of bugs we're going to encounter. By the way, if they, if their support ever tells you that a feature is in and then you discover it doesn't quite work the way you were told, good luck getting that fixed. Um, it's frequently the case that you grab a new version because you said, hey, there is this new feature in it and it's perfect. And then you start using it. Oh, it doesn't quite work on your levels the way they said it would. They're imply it's something you're doing wrong and then you show what's going on. What, what the problem is, and they go, oh, we'll try to get that fixed, and you're back into waiting for the next revision to come out. Managers themselves and directors, good luck learning to self-edit. Keeping your own self from wanting to add and change existing features is really hard. I mentioned that was one of the biggest problems with Arcanum. If we had an idea, it went into that game. That game was bursting with features. It probably didn't need to. I know every time I talk about removing a feature, someone will comment, but that's my favorite feature. I know, but all of the features didn't belong and didn't need to be in the same game. And that was the problem with that. But despite everything I just said, there's always people that think they can manage the chaos of game development. And I always wonder, do they think they can schedule for all of the stuff I just mentioned? A lot of times when I ask them how they do it, they, there are these platitudes. Oh, we're put in buffers. We'll have extra people ready to go in. And I'm always thinking, you're going to do all that and still come in on time and on budget. I've never seen that happen. And the bigger the game, the less likely I've seen that happen because more of what I've just mentioned is likely to have happen in a bigger game. And also nothing I said above, not one thing was hypothetical. I've seen every single one of those things happen in some game I was working on. Some I wasn't in charge of. I was just doing code and going, hmm, I've seen that happen before. Feel sorry for those leads. But there was nothing I could do about it. It happened outside of something I was working on. I've also been a director and had these things happen and had people go, why didn't you foresee this? I'm, I'm not a super genius. That's why I didn't foresee this. So all these things have happened. And yet I still see people go, it's entirely bad management. It's hard to wrap my head around a statement as general and disprovable as that. So yes, let me just end this way. Crunch is often the result of bad management, but there are other reasons. And unless your funding source is deep and unquestioning, expect at some point while making a game, and the bigger the game, the more likely this is, to make a severe cut in the game, either removing features or removing content, or crunch. It's gonna be one or the other. So I think crunch can be reduced with better management, but it won't be eliminated. So if we go forward with the idea, okay, crunch has to happen sometimes. If you just accept that, how can we make it better? And this is where, and I've thought this for years, and I've thought it before when it was really considered a dirty word, I actually think it's time for the game industry to get unions, mainly because unions help the people who are in the trenches get better pay, for overtime or get time off for that overtime or other benefits that just make up for the crunch. I love that in the movie industry, for example, the people who do camera work or lighting or makeup or whatever, if they're told they have to stay past eight hours, they get paid more for those extra times. Plus there is an absolute limit to how long they can be kept and they can't be called back really quickly. So I think I, Somebody said what it was once. It's like, once you leave, you have at least 11 hours before you can be called back on the set. 
I see nothing like that in the game industry. I, I see and have been the person who's worked long hours, late hours, gotten four hours of sleep and come back the next morning. I don't think that was a good way to work. I don't think it's sustainable. But I also think that pretending that a magic production scheduling wand will fix all these is insane. I think we need to instead accept that crunch will occasionally happen and try to ameliorate how bad it is. Try to make the crunch as short as possible and try to compensate people for having to do the crunch. I hope that makes sense. I hope that doesn't, you know, start a flame war, but I think that that is probably the most reasonable take on crunch I can come to after watching so many projects of so many different sizes in terms of team sizes and budgets be made. I just can't imagine a game being made with a flawless schedule. Um, unless it's so tiny that I don't even call it a game, I call it a toy. But even some of my toys have taken me a long time to do. It's game development's hard. I don't know what else to say. So hopefully Crunch will get better in the future by either being shorter or better compensated, but I don't think it will ever go away. <laughs>